Greetings, Saberites. Anonymous here. Wanted to address a little thing that has come up a whole lot in our time on the internet, but uh, came up recently on um, the LX forum. And this kind of ties into what we were talking about earlier with protecting your hands um, in a ways that sabering differs from actual conventional sword play. Um, and the one thing that was brought up was the fact that a lightsaber is a cylindrical tube, right? Whereas a blade is flat, right? Okay. Now I'm using a saber here so that we can see an edge, um, even if it has a double edge. Uh, <clears throat> we'll get into that here in a second. So uh, first of all, the idea that's proposed is that because this is a 360 degree cutting surface, it allows you more techniques. Um, you can do stuff that you can't do with this, meaning you can cut when with your regular sword, it would be the flat here, I can cut like this, right? I can go back and forth kind of this way with my hand. Um, and somehow that is supposed to give us a, a larger repertoire of techniques. Now, that the lightsaber gives you a larger repertoire of techniques may be true, but it's not for the reason of the cylindrical blade. And uh, I'll put this down here, and we'll go kind of go over this here. So, a sword is kind of ergonomically designed to be a cutting weapon, a thrusting weapon, but it's meant to be held in the hand, and it's meant to be swung out here at the arm. Now, I'm using a one-handed saber here, <clears throat> right, what in Chinese we call dao. Um, <clears throat> this action right here, right, when you're doing it with this, requires edge alignment, right? So when I'm doing this, I have to have this edge facing the target, otherwise it's not going to do the damage that I want it to do. Um, if I have the sword like this and I kind of there, I may be slapping the target, but I'm not going to be doing it a whole lot of damage. Now, um, just because that I am, when I'm using one of these, I'm limited to hitting at the edge, does not necessarily mean that if I'm no longer confined to that edge, I have a whole lot of <laughs> extra leeway. Pretty much all, the only thing that the cylindrical blade does is it takes away the need for slop or for perfect edge alignment and technique. However, edge alignment and technique are absolutely essential even in saber because, and we go here, the reason that a blade is shaped like this, the edge over here lining up with these knuckles, this, the guard here, the, the handle, everything, the fact that it is, it is balanced about five or six inches from the hilt, right? so that most of its momentum is out here in the, at, at the tip, where it's gonna do a lot of the cutting. Um, all of that is based upon our natural body mechanisms in our shoulder, in our arm, in our hand, in our grip, right? So that doesn't change whether we're holding one of these or one of these, right? <clears throat> the importance of edge alignment when we're doing savory here is because it is biomechanically the strongest, safest, and best way that we can use this weapon, swing a foreign object to try to hit something. And there's a couple of reasons for that. When we hit something, we have Newtonian physics to deal with. There's going to be equal amounts of shock coming back to us. If our weapon is aligned nicely and our body mechanics are all together, when I make contact, that force is going to go in the weapon, into my hand, through my arm, into my shoulder, through my spine, into my hips, and down into the ground. I will be unharmed, right? If I do something like this, where I'm hitting like here, most of the force is going to be caught in the wrist. So that's going to put my wrist at risk of injury, okay? If I, same thing over here. If I'm cutting with lots of slop, right, where I'm letting my wrist break, this is something that we see a lot in beginners is leading with the hands, coming through like this, because they like seeing the blade kind of move all around and everything. And 
that not only exposes the hands to getting hit, but ergonomically, it's putting a lot of stress on the wrist. And a lot of people get really tired arms, really sore wrists and thumbs and stuff like that if they practice too much. So edge alignment is still extremely important when we're doing this. Um, that's why when we're looking for sabers, we like stuff that has non-cylindrical hilts or something that we can feel an edge on to give us some sense that we're holding the weapon in the right way um, and all of that. So that's, that's the basic thing. Now, we do have more techniques available to us when we're using a lightsaber, and it's not because of the flat blade, but conventional swords are optimized for certain types of techniques, like as you're saying here, <coughs> this is optimized for cutting, right? Now, that's gonna put the, the, the weight kind of out here. So it's going to lend itself to slashing techniques, to stuff like this, and it's gonna lend itself to a lot of downward techniques, whereas the upward techniques are going to be a lot of parries, a lot of that, that kind of thing. So we're gonna be doing a lot of this. The further out it goes, probably the more follow through we're gonna be wanting to take with that as not to allow that force to get stuck anywhere in our arm. Um, so, and that has to do with the blade shape, okay? Now, with this, even though the, the center of balance is pretty good, right out here, okay, not quite as far out as a dowel or a cutting thing, but it allows us enough leverage to use two-handed, right? So we can use this like a katana, we can use it like a great sword if we have a big enough blade, or we can use it as a long sword, but we can also use it as a rapier, right? Or as a jian, or as a cutlass, or a one-handed sword, or anything like that. Not only that, we can switch at a moment's notice. I can take a couple of katana type like strikes, boom, boom, switch right over into a kind of fencing style like that, and then switch over into more of a shopping style without having to switch weapons, without having to really terribly change what I'm doing at the time. So that's one of the freedoms that I think we get with this weapon and what we've been having a lot of fun with, at least as a weapons enthusiasts who like to spar around, having that added dynamic really, really changes the game and makes it a very, very fun, fun activity, um, sparring and such. So there you go. What, what is the advantage of the lightsaber over a conventional blade? Um, it's not what most people think. We're not getting extra stuff that we can't do with this. We're just kind of getting a little less emphasis on exact technique and a little more flexibility in the type of weapon that this can be like at any one time. So there you go. Uh, hopefully that's answer some questions out there, at least uh, show where we're coming from. So until next time, we'll see you later. Have a great day and happy sabering.